So welcome back. So this is the second part of three of a programmable communications review. So now I'm focused on to trends and strategy. Again, this is broadly similar to what's been presented previously last year. Uh, there's a few updates, but really the meat of the uh, updates are in the last section, which looks at reviewing what's happened in 2020 and 2021, and then where we're all going over the next couple of years. So we've seen this before. I presented it in the first uh, part of this review. It's the model I use for how the market breaks down in programmable communications. And there's two broad trends we've seen. Consolidation, getting the volumes up and costs down. Well, yeah, maybe costs down, but we haven't seen the prices coming down. Uh, so like Cinch buying uh, SAP Digital Interactive, buying Intelliquent. So now it's sort of, you know, it's bought half of the duopoly on ATP messaging in the US. And it's also bought a significant player within the voice market predominantly focused within uh, North America. And the other is focusing up on the applications, which of course is uh, Twilio's strategy uh, rather than Cinch's strategy or Infobip or some of those other players. And with Twilio, we've seen acquisitions like SendGrid, though Cinch has now copied them, uh, and uh, also like S Segment, which gets it into you know, really cleaning up the customer data so that the insights generated are far more accurate. So these are two broad trends that we've uh, seen and will continue to see in the coming years. Now, I use a model to sort of break down this market because uh, yeah, there's a lot of confusion. You know, Twilio and Cinch are sort of compared and, you know, it's, you know, they're the same and they're not in any way. They're very different culturally. They're very different in business focus. They are converging, don't get me wrong. But to say they're the same today is not true. So I break the comms model down into, there's the application. So that's UCAS, CCAS, uh, CPAS, conferencing, identity verification, you know, sort of marketing campaign management. And this is generally what enterprises buy, either directly or through a channel, as well as, you know, service providers that package, you know, uh, the application up into an offer. So, you know, an example being, you know, like an online gym uses Zoom's conferencing API because it doesn't care at all about the technology. It just needs to be able to set up conferences uh, between, you know, people who want to work out at a virtual gym and the instructors that do all their, you know, music and workouts and all the rest of it. Then there's the technology. So this is the telecom app server, machine learning, conversation intelligence, voice recognition, WebRTC API management workflow, all the gritty, nitty gritty sort of nuts and bolts. So, you know, most of the open source projects fall into this, like FreeSwitch, Asterix, Stratio, Jambons, Phonos, WebRTC, et cetera. There is always the sort of build versus buy decisions here with lots of startups focused on solving specific technology gaps, you know, hence why we always see this regular stream of uh, technology acquihires uh, in this space. And the last part, that's the aggregation. So BIX is an example, Infobit, Mepto. Now these have deals with hundreds of carriers, aggregators, number authorities, regulators from all around the world, for voice, SMS, MMS, RCS, phone numbers, SIMs, interconnect charging, and all the different flavors within there, like 10 DLC, short codes, 100 SMS, excuse me, SIP, VoIP, Volta, HD, Voice, and all in compliance with each country's specific regulations. It takes time. It's a culture that's compatible with dealing with bureaucracy, okay? That's why Twilio doesn't focus down there. Twilio focuses from the technology up into the applications. It tries to keep dealing with the telco world, you know, at arm's length because it finds it relatively distasteful. This is important for understanding the different players in the market and you know, what will be their uh, strategy. Now, I, I review this because it's important when we're looking at strategy to you know, understand that there are some mistakes that have been made that impact how we operate today. I mean, the first, of course, is a hundred year old mistake that people want to talk. I mean, they did once, don't get me wrong. I know yeah. those movies you see from the seventies and the eighties where people are always on the phone, 
It's true. In fact, through the pandemic, voice traffic has increased, particularly with mobile, as people were talking a lot more. However, give a kid a smartphone, you know, talking is the last thing they want to do on that. And with that said, I mean, it is, but it tends to be focused around, you know, baiting each other while they're playing uh, games together. Then 50 year mistake is voice is voice. Voice is the PSTM. I know it's a small bandwidth and you know, we all defined by this sort of DS0 unit of change. But actually, voice is very rich and varied now. Yes, there's HD voice, but there's also a whole range of voice messaging, uh, you know, uh, sort of um, you know, in some of the startups we've seen in the Slack ecosystem, we are adding voice into uh, Slack. So today, voice is hardly ever just voice. And it's got metadata, it's bundled with other information. So uh, it's far richer. It's sort of you know, one of a number of pieces of data that people are using for communications. And of course, <laughs> the classic techie mistake, which is you'll have your own app on the phone. No, there are very few apps. You know, I, I remember once, going to the garden center and looking for, you know, when it was open because it was closed and they directed me to their app. I was just like, no, you know, I went to Google and found it on there, but uh, I'm not doing downloading yet another app. And this is part of, you know, the power that, you know, the evil company no longer is Facebook or now Meta uh, and Google have uh, that most people don't use download apps for particular companies, it's they access that company's information through one of these gatekeepers. So that's you know some of the errors that you know category errors that we've seen that you know have impacted uh, our industry. And you know there are two sides to an enterprise. You know contact centers support customers, and that's considered a cost center. You know because of the high cost of agents. Now of course we're going to be hearing at TAD Summit about the problems in uh, you know, retaining agents uh, as we're going through this sort of mass resignation uh, and all the automations and self-service options to try and minimize those costs where we use basically sort of uh, you know, uh, programs to keep people occupied and frustrated. And then there's the marketing and sales where of course that's on the revenue side. So uh, you know, programmable comms exists in there to help you know, a simple example is like speak to leads. Uh, you know, a company that's been going for so many years now. You know, a lead comes in from a website, somebody's interested in the course, an automation that gets a real person talking to that person that's interested in the course to close that piece of business is a simple example. I, I mean, there's a whole host of other interesting companies in automation, well, enhancing sales and marketing to be more effective. Now, what we've seen, of course, is enterprises have turned to data. Uh, you know, it's become the differentiator so that you, know, you have a personalized experience, you have a relevant experience, you have an experience when you contact the company that remembers what you know, has happened in the past. Uh, but of course, you know, Facebook plays you know, a, a very strong piece in that you know, because of social media. And it's the least trustworthy in terms of compliance, security. Uh, I, you know, I mean, we've seen all the stuff that's taking place. Uh, you know, there's quite an anti-Facebook movement. It's just, it surprised me it's taken, you know, uh, countries so long to finally realize, you know, yet another leak, yet another example of you know, Facebook misusing customer information. It's just, you know, at, at some point, you, know, you have to lose trust. It's just, it's been shocking it's taken so long. Now, I did last year, um, really interesting interview with Marlon Bowser, the um, CEO for HDK, and it's all around data-driven loyalty. And he was talking around you know, the relevance of voice, SMS, email, and web chat as channels will remain for years to come. You know, we really are early days with WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, uh, Android Messenger, you know, with RCS hidden under the hood. You know, the ubiquity of voice 
uh, the ubiquity of SMS and email. Uh, it can't be underestimated and will be part of customer for communications for a long time to come. Now, of course, the infrastructure, you know, back to this voice-centric approach, it's built for the wrong you know, reality. You know, we need to be redesigning our communications, both employee and customer, around the smartphone. That is voice, text, cameras, browser. I mean, again, we've been talking about this for several years, and we're only, I would say, still at the sort of product development stage. There's a lot that can be done. It's just surprising how slow you know, we're moving to this new reality. You know, privacy matters. I, mean, you know, I did a survey. Uh, I, I was asked uh, on a survey from uh, the pool that my son attends, uh, you know, they were doing a survey about um, COVID. And then you know, monk, uh, survey monkey said, oh, do you want to do another survey? And it was had some interesting stuff. And it was all around whether you think uh, Facebook is evil. Also TikTok as well. And of course, I let them know, you know, uh, my views quite readily. Uh, but, you know, the mistake is social media is the enterprise data play. And it's not. I mean, you are losing customer privacy. You're losing control of your customers by bringing them in or by bringing uh, Google in. I, you know, for all this, you know, sort of you know, challenges in innovation, carriers' business models have been about supporting data privacy in compliance. So there is actually over the PSDN, you know, so, you know, it, it's not straightforward, but it is a network built to protect the end customer. You know, with CPaaS, you know, and I made this comment in the previous presentation, you know. <laughs> The focus has been on sort of the atomic APIs, the uh, you know, voice or the message. But actually, the opportunity, and Twilio's leading the charge here, is moving up the stack. And that's why we saw them buying segment so that they can clean up the customer data. So the, you know, the insights they generate are far cleaner and more accurate. Because always, with anything that has the acronym AI or machine learning in, the cleanliness of your data is critical. So yeah, all those category errors, you know, all that slow shift in recognizing how customers are really communicating means that SMS and voice will remain in root health. They're not going away anytime soon, okay? Uh, social messaging is necessary, but it's only part of the answer. And it's for those customers that choose it, who want it. It's a smartphone. This, is a uh, cat, yeah, I've been so disappointed in how slow as an industry we've really grabbed onto how voice, camera, browser, messaging all fit together and can you know, really create some powerful automation, uh, business process tools, as well as customer communication tools. Wholesale you know, consolidation, you know, Cinch's leading example there, will continue. And you know, margins will be squeezed, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. Applications are necessary for margin growth. So for all programmable communications players, yes, there's you know, dashboards, there's analytics, but also the applications business is critical because that in the limit is what enterprises buy. Application focus will move into conversations, insight, and customer experience, really helping customers get to what they want faster. But again, it's been a very slow uh, sort of uh, evolution uh, in the market. So that's some of the trends that I'm seeing, uh, some of the strategies I'm seeing emerging. It's just been a lot slower than I thought. I think in part because everybody has just been, you know, uh, blocking and tackling the, uh, you know, just the wholesale movement to as a service for enterprise communications. But I feel these trends, you know, most probably 2023 onwards uh, will start to come to the fore. And just to say, we are planning an in-person event for TAT Summit, uh, in the middle of November in 2022 in Aveiro in Portugal, which is 
known to be the Venice of Portugal, and that will be at the HQ for uh, Go Contact. So we have Go Contact and Broad Voice to thank for that.